Well, good morning, folks. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is at the center of our faith, welcome to worship this morning. And to those of you joining us on Facebook Live, we'd love to know that, you're jo that you have joined us, and I invite you to leave a, a prayer concern or a, a comment, uh, a word of thanks, whatever you like. We'd just like to know that you're here. If you're wondering why I'm a little echoey, I'll tell you why I'm a little echoey. Because I'm actually in the church this morning. I thought I would give this a try. And uh, I did a, a visual test on uh, Wednesday, but I didn't do an audio test. So I'm, I'm sorry if I'm a little echoey this morning. As we gather, we are reminded that we gather on land that is the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And may we live with respect on this land and in peace and friendship with its people. I just have one announcement and that's that um, effective Thursday, I will be on vacation for two and a half weeks. And um, in my Thursday thoughts next week, um, everything as far as where you're gonna be joining folks for worship and who's on call for pastoral care will be in that message. So um, I invite you to take a look at that message when you get it. As always, the first pe people that you contact for pastoral care is uh, Joanne Thornton and uh, Gordon McKean. Is there anything that needs to be shared from the congregation? Then I'm going to light the Christ candle. I saw matches here this morning. The Christ candle is lit as a symbol of the light that came into the world in creation, as a symbol of the light that was more fully revealed in Jesus Christ. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness will never overcome it. I invite you to join with me in the call to worship. Your parts are in bold. Faith that matters, love that matters, community that matters. These are the words. There are words that speak of our identity as followers of Jesus. Faith that matters, love that matters, community that matters. These are words that speak of our hope as followers of Jesus. Faith that matters love that matters, community that matters. These are words that speak of our mission as followers of Jesus. Come, let us worship. And let us pray together. God of the past, God of the present, and God of the future. We gather in our separate places, but still we are together. Together we are your people. Seeking, seeking to follow, to follow Jesus, Jesus in our time, time and place. And place. You, have you have provided people with people gifts, with gifts for, leadership. for leadership, love and, and listening, listening. Excitement, excitement and enthusiasm, and enthusiasm. Acceptance, acceptance and decision-making, decision -making. respect, respect and, and a sense of your spirit, of your spirit. Hope, hope, inspiration, inspiration and, presence. and presence. Empower us to be good stewards of your gifts, O oh God. God and use them use to benefit, them to your, benefit world. your world. May we do so with humility and compassion.
we turn to you, knowing that you understand us, forgive us, and love us like a mother. And so we pray with confidence, confidence and, faith. and faith. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we will sing together, God the Spirit, guide and guardian. Spirit, guide and guardian, wind swift flame and hovering dove, breath of life and voice of prophets, sign of blessing, power of love. Give to those who lead your people fresh anointing of your grace. Send them forth and bold apostles to your church in every place. The Spirit, guide and guardian, whispering flame and hovering dove, breath of Thank you. Will you join me in a moment of prayer? May these words, offered with humility and hope, draw us closer to you, O God, and one another. Amen. As we continue with our series based on the book, Holy Currencies, the author, Reverend Eric Law, has this to say about the currency of gracious leadership. Gracious leadership does not accept the linear, top-down and static leadership style that assumes the first will be first and the last will be last. In this kind of leadership, the powerful are always in control and have all the influence. Conversely, the powerless are always without influence and power. Instead, gracious leaders follow Jesus' circular way. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Only in a circle can the first be last and the last be first. Gracious leadership is therefore reciprocal in sharing power. A leader does not lead all the time, 
neither does the follower always follow. Gracious leaders move in the rhythm of lead, follow, lead, follow, which means that a teacher is a learner and a learner is also a teacher. Gracious leaders do not direct, but collect and summarize. They do not decide for others, but rather decide with participation from all involved. They do not impose their values, but seek to find shared meaning with others. Gracious leaders do not focus on self-interest, but on community and well-being. Lydia is one of my favorite women in the Bible, and especially the newer Second Testament. She was a businesswoman. She was resourceful. She is resourceful. She is peaceful yet attentive, good traits for a successful merchant. And she has learned to quickly assess potential buyers and sellers, because in business, one must make quick judgments and synthesize information. She is a leader in her community. She has initiative, and she is the first person in Europe to be baptized and follow the man that Paul told her about, the man Jesus. One of these days, I'm going to take a trip to the Middle East and perhaps follow one of Paul's journeys. Just take a look at this. Look at this journey from Damascus to Antioch, Tarsus, Derbe, Iconium. Look at this journey that he undertook. That's a big journey by anybody's stretch of the imagination, much less in those times. Just a few short months ago, we would have been able to be on the other side of the world in less than 24 hours, right? And it's mind-boggling for me to understand, to imagine the kind of journeys that Paul undertook, probably by foot, by camel, and by water. Now, both Paul and Lydia displayed leadership. Paul, by undertaking long journeys and establishing Christian communities wherever he was welcomed. Lydia, by being open to God's message right where she lived, worked, and served God. Different ways of leading, but the same components. I played around with the word leadership and came up with the following graph. The same graph that you might have seen on uh, Facebook. This one. Listening and love, excitement, acceptance, decisions, eager, respect, spirit, hope, inspiration, and presence. Today's sermon is a series of many reflections based on those words, those words that spell out leadership. They have an accompanying scriptural reference. Our first scripture reading is taken from Proverbs 1. These are words attributed to Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. For learning about wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for gaining instruction in wise dealing, righteousness, justice, and equality, and equity, to teach shrewdness to the simple, knowledge and prudence to the young. Let the wise also hear and gain in learning, and the discerning acquire skill, to understand a proverb and a figure, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. The first words are listening and love. Let the wise also hear and gain in learning. For gracious leadership to flourish and be effective, we need to listen. Listen for the spirit. Mm. Listen to each other. Listen to those outside our circles. And in our case, listen to our community. 
What learning, another L word, might take place if we listen deeply to one another and to the spirit and to the community? We just might hear what God calling us to do. And when we listen, are we listening for understanding or to respond? And of course, are we listening with love? Paul writes this to the church in Corinth. You're muted, Ryan. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Indeed, if we do not have love at the core of what we do, we are a clanging gong. Without love, love of God, love of neighbor, and love of self, very little can be accomplished. I know that you all love our church and want it to thrive. Do you love it enough to let it change and grow, perhaps in unfamiliar ways? Let's move on to excitement. After all these years of ministry and church participation, there are still parts of the Bible that are unfamiliar to me. In doing a search for the word excitement in the Bible, I discovered a passage from Acts that I had never come across. Peter had been imprisoned by King Herod for being a follower of Jesus and was sentenced to be executed. The night before his execution, angels came and led him out of the prison, despite being shackled to the guards. He makes his way to the home of another follower of Jesus. Let's listen as the story unfolds in Acts chapter 12, verses 12 to 14. Still shaking his head amazed, Peter went to Mary's house, the Mary who was John Mark's mother. The house was packed with praying friends. When he knocked on the door to the courtyard, a young woman named Rhonda came to see who it was. But when she recognized his voice, Peter's voice, she was so excited and eager to tell everyone Peter was there that she had forgot to open the door and left him standing in the street. She was so excited to tell everyone that Peter was there that she couldn't believe it. When was the last time you were excited to tell somebody about Jesus? And by the way, when I'm asking you these questions, I'm asking myself the very same questions. Moving on to acceptance. Paul wrote about cultivating good relationships in Romans 14. Let's listen to his words that have relevance for today. Welcome with open arms, fellow believers who don't see things the way you do. Don't jump all over them every time they do or say something you don't agree with. Even when it seems that they are strong on opinions, but weak in the faith department. Remember, they have their own history to deal with. Treat them gently. Are we accepting and welcoming of new ideas? New ways to explore being a follower of Jesus? Are we willing not just to accept, but to welcome the fact that the church has changed and is changing, that it always was and always will be? Decisions. Job is not a book from the Bible that we read very much or that I refer to very much, but these three short verses seemed appropriate for today. They're from chapter 22. You will pray to him and he will hear you and you will pay your vows. You will decide on a matter and it will be established for you and light will shine on your ways. Are we willing to participate in making hard decisions? Decisions that threaten the status quo. Decisions that are guided by God for the good of the whole community 
and not just for some. Eager. Are you, are we eager to pray and listen to God? Are you and we eager to enter more fully into a life of love and peace and justice? Let's listen to this passage from Acts 16, where Paul on one of his journeys encounters Lydia. She's a businesswoman. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we, where, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira, a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Are we excited and eager about the possibilities in our time and place? Do we believe that there is meaning and joy in a life of faith? Are we willing to go beyond our comfort zones and share our faith with others? And respect. Paul in his letter to the Thessalonians writes this. But we appeal to you brothers and sisters to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you and the Lord and admonish you, esteem them very high in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. Do you, do we have respect for each other, for ourselves? For the notion that individually we don't have all the answers, but together with God leading us, and Jesus' example, we can forge a new way forward. Spirit. The Iona community in Scotland uses the wild goose as an image for the Holy Spirit. A reminder that along with the image of a gentle dove, the Holy Spirit is untamed and cannot be controlled. Mark shares his account of Jesus' baptism in the first chapter of his gospel. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Do you, do we? have a sense that the spirit is at work in our community, inside the church and outside the church? Hope. One of my friends and colleagues, the Reverend Dr. Ross Bartlett uses a passage from 1 Peter as part of his email signature. Always be ready to give an answer to those who ask about the hope that is in you, but do so with gentleness and respect. Do you, do we have a sense of hope? Not a wishy-washy pie in the sky sort of hope, but the hope that is grounded in a sense of awe and wonder. A sense of hope that puts its working clothes on and spreads hope to a hurting world. Inspiration. To be inspired, which literally means to breathe in means to be enlivened by the breath of God that animated Adam, that gave life to Jesus, and that he breathed on his disciples. Isaiah says it in this way. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations. Are you, are we 
inspired by God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit? Are we encouraged and do we take heart from examples of people down through the ages? And presence. The psalmist sums it up in this way. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to soul or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Are you, are we willing to be present to God, to the teachings of Jesus and to one another? Are you, are we willing to stick together even in difficult times, even if we don't get our own way, even when we disagree with one another? Are you, are we willing to be present, mind, body, and spirit, time, talent, and treasure? And if you are, if we are, we may have the gift of gracious leadership. Some of you may have seen this video called The Wisdom of Geese. I've seen it a couple of times and it's still, I still find meaning in it. Okay, I'm having major technical difficulties. Can anybody hear me? Yes. Yes. You can hear me. Mm. Yes. Can you see the video? No. Okay, thank you. have a partial screen and uh, the audio. But That's the, funny uh, because I, I have no screen at all. <laughs> the screen see, we do see, or I see, is still. It's not, not moving. I, I see you, Catherine. Your screen, your personal screen is, is fully there, but your, your video screen is not. Okay. I have a blue screen and I have, <laughs> have geese in one corner. Oh, you have a. Uh... Now I have okay. geese. I think you yep. got to stop. You just have to press the frame. Geese and on off button. Okay, so like my screen is black. Okay, yeah, come down to the middle. Good. You're almost at the cursor to start it. No, I'm like my screen is totally black. Okay. Yeah, but I think we can see the geese there but we now. Have geese. And uh, I think it's ready to there, play. Click, click. Yeah, right there, click. Oh, no, just a little to the right. <laughs> a little Keep more. Going. What, what? More. A little more. 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 Up. More and up. Up. There you go. Up. up. Straight up. Just click Straight the space up. bar if you have there it. You go. A little up. A little up. Teeny more. There click. you go. Stop. Nope. Damn. <laughs> No, but what you don't understand is like, I, I cannot see a thing. Mm. Like, okay, that's so fine, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna have to shut my computer off. Okay. Because I, I can't see anything. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. No worries.
Oh, you're back. Oh, you're back. I'm back. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I have no idea what happened there. None whatsoever. So it's just as well that um, I, well, not that I anticipated that, but when I was getting, knowing that I'd have to send this to people who had wouldn't be able to see the video, I wrote out some of the text. So just give me a moment to find my text. Next time you see geese heading south for the winter, flying along in a V formation, you might consider the wisdom of their ways. As each bird flaps its wing, it creates an uplift for the bird immediately following it. By flying in the V-shape, they achieve 71% greater flying range than if each bird flew on its own. People who share a common direction and sense of community can get where they are going more quickly and easily because they are traveling on the thrust of one another. When a goose falls out of formation, it suddenly feels the drag and quickly gets back into formation to take advantage of the lifting effect of the birds in front of it. If we had their wisdom, we will stay in formation with those who are headed in the same direction as we are. And when the head goose gets tired, it rotates back in the wing and another goose takes lead. So take turns with demanding jobs, and leadership is one of them. Geese honk from behind to encourage those up front to keep up their spirits. And finally, when a goose gets sick or is wounded and falls at a formation, two other geese fall out with the goose and follow it down to lend it help and protection. They stay with the fallen goose and until it is able to fly or until it dies. Only then do they launch out on their own and join either their catch up with their own formation or join another formation headed at the same direction. Consider the wisdom of the geese and what it would be like to fly in formation. Love and listening, excitement, acceptance, decisions, eager, respect, spirit, hope, inspiration, and presence. Thanks be to God for examples of leaders in the Bible. Thanks be to God for those who have offered leadership here and in the wider community. Thanks be to God for each one of you. Amen. And now I'm frozen again, aren't I? Byron is going to share a ministry of music with us. Good morning, everyone. When I heard that uh, leadership was the theme for this week, I was looking for a new text to use for a new song and was, uh, was uh, directed uh, to um, some of the so-called leadership psalms, and one of those is Psalm 101. When I read it, I was uh, really taken aback by the the negative um, uh, imagery that's present in that psalm as well as the positive leadership. So I've uh, written a piece uh, called Psalm 101 Revisited, and it uh, uses new text and uh, incorporates almost all of the words that we saw in the, in the beautiful circle of leadership. So this is Psalm 101 Revisited. steadfast love we will sing a heart justice we will ponder the way that is blameless and seek the spirit that will come we will walk with integrity in our lives and not be offended 
Thank you, Byron. And uh, for those of you who may not have realized that that's also original music that he composed for those words. Now, Jocelyn Dalton has shared a who's who's in the who's who in the pew. I am going to attempt to uh, share the the video that she sent. And her voice is really soft, so you're going to have to listen very closely. Hi there, I'm Jocelyn Dalton. I am from Dartmouth. I've been in the HRM areas basically since I finished uh, university working in government, uh, in the Halifax area, in community development field, and have stayed on ever since into my retirement. I've been retired almost five years now and enjoying my retirement, more leisurely pace, enjoying my friends, community development again as a volunteer level, and doing a bit of traveling and uh, enjoying nature, just basically keeping a good, healthy lifestyle, enjoying it very much. Uh, what brought me to stairs? Well, Sam brought me to stairs. He found the uh, Stairs United Church as a great spot for him to go when he moved over to Halifax. We had been doing a long distance relationship for uh, quite a number of years. And uh, when he moved to Dartmouth, he found Stairs United Memorial, liked it, and I would go with him. We did used to alternate between churches, I being Catholic and being United. But over the last couple of years, I decided I would like to join Stairs myself. I like the United Church's approach, uh, focus on community development and a sense of inclusiveness. And um, so then I've, I've, I'm still left on good terms with the Catholic Church. Actually, I just met with my former priest last, this past week. Uh, and he's very respectful of my decision. And um, we continue to be friends. But I, I did join the United Memorial Church a couple of years ago. And, you'd enjoy it and the people and the approach very much. 
Um, what's my favorite Bible passage or hymn and why? Well, when I thought about that, I thought about the hymn came to mind that I really have enjoyed over the years, and it's called uh, How Beautiful Upon the Mountain. And uh, that's a great hymn. I think it's uh, just moving in terms of the music and the arrangement uh, by a um, actually a priest from France. His name is Lucien Diaz. You'll probably find it if you Google. Um, anyway, they used to play it at the church that I attended, and I used to find it very moving. And so that's what I thought of when I thought about my favorite hymn. It's based on a uh, passage from Isaiah, actually 52.7, and I can read that to you. It's very brief. How wonderful it is to see a messenger coming across the mountains, bringing good news, the news of peace. He announces victory and says to Sion, your God is king. Those who guard the city are shouting, shouting together for joy. You can see with their, they can see with their own eyes the return of the Lord to Sion. It's a very optimistic song, a very beautiful, moving song. And uh, I'll leave a link with um, Catherine, so maybe you can uh, play it sometime. Uh, what's giving me hope right now? I would say what's giving me hope right now is um, that even though COVID has been very challenging, it has offered new opportunities for growth and for self-reflection uh, among many people. I think, uh, particularly when I think of my own children and their partners and, ch and their children, how it has given them time to take a pause, appreciate uh, their, their families and grow their relationships as well. And I really love to see the way, you know, even in pictures, how happy my, my grandchildren are to have more attention from their parents. And beyond that, you know, we don't take anything so much for granted now. Um, we look at our health more carefully. We're more uh, cautious about our health. Uh, we're buying more locally. We think twice before, you know, we, we take a trip, whereas before COVID, uh, it seemed like people were just running around the world without any consideration about, you know, is this something I want to do or not? A hard on the environment with pollution and, um, you know, businesses and manufacturing, apparently even now you hear that uh, people are starting to even hear the birds, which they never could hear before. Uh, there's also opportunity to address some serious challenges that have surfaced during this time, like treatment of, you know, um, seasonal workers when they come to Canada, conditions in nursing homes, improving that, uh, issues around homelessness. So it's brought things to, to light uh, more obviously than they have in the past. And I'm optimistic that these things will be taken more seriously into the future. What brings me joy? Um, I would say the fact that I am healthy, that I am, um, have my God, my understanding to rely on, uh, have good, good relationships, and I'm involved in continuous learning. Um, enjoying nature, music. I think those are the things that bring me joy on a regular basis. Uh, relationships, I suppose, is the key, is, is maintaining positive relationships with other people. And what am I most proud of? I guess I would have to say I'm most proud of my grandchildren and my children. My children have done quite well. They're all married. They're happy in their careers. They've got good partners, and they come from good families. So that's nothing that I take for granted. Uh, I'm obviously proud of my grandchildren. They, um, they're very healthy. And again, I don't take that for granted. And as some of you know, I've recently become a grandmother for the fourth time with a little girl being born on June 26th. And she's very healthy. So yeah. That's what I guess I would be most proud of, is that uh, my family has turned out to be good people and uh, maintaining good relationships as well. Thank you. Uh, we'll uh, close for now, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Jesslyn. As we gather in these spaces, we offer ourselves and what we have. We offer 
them to each other and we offer them to God. And I, this morning I have a basket since the offering plate is at home. Um, and I invite you to imagine what you want to place in this basket, what gifts for leadership you may have, what things of monetary value that you wish to be placed in here and blessed by God for the good of the world. So I'll just give you a moment or two of silence to imagine this basket. Thank you, O oh God, for the gift of community, for the gift of technology being able to draw us close to one another, even in times of physical distancing. We give you thanks for opportunity to create a world, create a better world, a world full of faith and love and community. And so we ask you to bless what we offer, and we offer it in Jesus' name and way. Amen. Let us come together as a community of faith in prayer. O oh God, who led your people out of the bondage of Egypt, lead us out of whatever holds us back and imprisoned. O oh God, of the hurting and sick, May they find healing and comfort. May we be instruments of healing and comfort. O oh God of the people on this street who struggle with mental health issues, may we look upon them with compassion and kindness. O oh God of those who are worried about job security and financial matters, help us to not only be generous, but to activate our hearts and our minds and our bodies to work for a world that is more just. O God of summer rains, may they nourish the earth and make us mindful of the people that grow our food. O God of longer summer days, may we take an opportunity to rest and be renewed. In silence or aloud, we lift up the concerns of our hearts. We gather all of our prayers, spoken and unspoken, and we offer them to you in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is one that is near and dear to many of us, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. Lord of Sea and Sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in deepest sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you. 
calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. All who wept for love of them, they turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. Go out into the world knowing that God loves you. Go out into the world leading your way with your heart and your mind and your soul. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you this day and always. Amen.